put all this time and energy into chasing these whitetail. I don't ever want to take any of it for granted, but there's some of them that just turn into an obsession. Uh, I'm not normally like that, but this dude has got my number. He became a deer that I was just obsessed with. I don't know that we've targeted any deer as, as strongly as we targeted Richard. It's so much more about other factors than just what does he score, what's his rack look like. That's why we love bow hunting these deer in the Midwest, because a lot of things have to go right to, uh, to execute and make it happen. And honestly, that's, that's the thrill of the chase. That's the chess match. When you get a, an encounter with a deer like Richard and, and see just how dominant he is, it kind of builds that story and it's, you know, builds that cat and mouse game, that relationship of like, like man, like you, you feel like you're starting to get to know the deer a little bit instead of it just being like, hey, this is a picture I got of him and let's go try to kill him. We put all this time and energy into chasing these whitetail. And I don't ever want to take any of it for granted, but there's some of them that just turn into an obsession. You know that feeling when you go to bed thinking about a specific deer, you wake up thinking about that deer. Constantly watching the weather, looking for those perfect conditions to make a move, because you know you may only get one shot. Richard is one of those bucks that's become a little bit of an obsession, and not just with me, but everybody else in Buck Commander. So I've got multiple trips up to the E3, specifically with this buck in mind. I got to see Richard on the hoof and kind of became infatuated with him a little bit. He's been all in there, he cracked his lawn. Yeah, that was an evening pick, 619. We're talking people driving 10, 12, 14 hours just for two days because the weather's right. On group trips, we're surrounding areas that we know he's been coming into. If you were to draw like a, I guess a triangle between the three or four spots, we've kind of just positioned ourselves right in the middle of all of it. Giving this little food plot a try, we've got pictures of Richard over here. Tombos already got his flag planted in the south corn. Back at the south corn, we saw a deer we, we were passing. He's four. He's big, but he's four. But we're still looking for Richard. So Rochi gives me the green light after all these years. Finally, I get to hunt a big deer. Uh, I usually don't get hung up on them. Like this one, I can't get away from it. My first encounter with Richard was with Hunter. And I never even reached for my binos. All I did was grab my rangefinder. That's all I needed to know. So that, that first encounter, Richard skirted us at about 70 yards, and I'm not taking a 70 yard shot, a marginal shot. Now if we're target shooting, yeah, I'll pop one at 70, 80, I mean, that's fine. But a hair in a heartbeat and a wall full of antlers, not going to do it. Listen, I've said this before, I said this about Grandpa, and I'll say this about that deer. Just to be able to see a deer like that, at this close on the hoof is like, it's like a rite of passage. It's the coolest thing ever, man. Even if I don't, I don't shoot that deer, people will hunt their whole lives and not see a, a, a fair chase deer like that. That is a magical deer. I've had a lot of deer walk away from me, but this one particularly stings pretty bad. There's a reason why Richard is as big as he is. He's super smart. 
And honestly, that's that's why we do, that's the thrill of the chase. That's the chess match that we play sometimes for over several years to get a deer like that. The first encounter I ever had with Richard, he kind of teased us. He came out, just was working on the fringe of the field. Didn't ever really get in bow range to, to give us much of an opportunity, but he just kind of jumped into my brain at that point and just became, became a deer that I was just obsessed with. We saw, we just saw the 10, but he turned and headed back to the north. I think the thing that drew me to wanting to hunt Richard more than anything was just he commanded a presence. You know, we talk about athletes and the way captains and leaders in the locker room are. Like, when this deer walked in the field, like, whether you were a doe or a younger buck, like, you knew he was there and he asserted his dominance. But also, like, he just had a really cool, absolutely amazing typical frame that you dream of getting to hunt a Midwest whitetail that looks like that. And then, on top of that, went back in there with him obviously being top of my hit list and get in there and there's a buck that we knew was in there just a great mainframe 10 point with split brow tines and he followed the script perfectly and i couldn't pass him up I have said it many times before that the E3 is my favorite place in the world to hunt whitetails. And this is the reason why right here. Well, then I go in there to scout the next day. And sure enough, I'm sitting there and probably an hour before dark, I look up and I just see a deer stand up out of the CRP. And Richard had been bedded 125 yards from me the whole afternoon and just stands up and I'm just like, wow. That was the first time that year that I'd gotten to see him on the hoof and it was just so incredibly impressive and I don't have a tag in my pocket anymore. We've got picture after picture after picture of this deer, but he always manages to, to slip away from us. Buck Commander is brought to you by Havilon. Barnett Crossbows. Baku. Scent Thief. It's late season, everybody's been hunting him. He's managed to make it through, but I've got a few days left, the conditions are right, I'm gonna try to make a play. Well, as you can tell, this is not the weather that we've been used to. A crazy change in temperature, shoot it, it feels like a full change in season. We got snow coming down, and most importantly, a giant. But uh, this, is, this is his home. So Richard spooks and Gage and I had a decision to make. So we decided to pack up as fast as we can and get out of there before we do you know, any more damage than we already had. And before we could get out of the blind, deer started piling back in. And next thing I know, I look over and Richard's standing at 30 yards.
is hammered. Gage. He is smashed, dude. <laughs> Where did he come from? Deer were, sh deer were pouring in from everywhere. Oh my gosh, dude, we were getting out. We were leaving. I cannot believe he came back. Well, thank you, Lord. I can't imagine him surviving that. I don't want to, I don't want to celebrate too early because we didn't see him go down, but he was hammered. Well, Drake and actually his new wife, Julia, just uh, showed up to bail us out. Had no idea that we stuck one, but fortunately he's got boots on and a light. Yeah, got my Lululemons. Yeah, hey, better than nothing. All right. So. We're gonna go over here and see if we can find the arrow and see what blood looks like. Um, we'll make a call from there. I, I don't know if this is gonna be a wait until tomorrow thing. One thing to consider is how much snowfall we might get that could cover up the blood, so. Yeah, let's go see what we're working with. Look at all the blood that the, that the snow's covering up. Yeah, I think we got to come back in the morning. As much as I hate to say it, you know, we didn't, we didn't hear a crash. Obviously, we like the shot. Found the arrow; it's covered. Blades deployed, like all that's good. If we do jump him bad tonight, and he doesn't bleed much, and tracks get covered up with snow, and yeah, there's. I mean, I can't imagine him surviving until now, but I'm pretty confident he's not gonna survive the night. So, I think we gotta let him lay. Man. It's been a long time since I've had to wait overnight. I've forgotten that feeling of, of laying in bed, wondering, you know, all the stuff going through your head on, is he dead? Is he alive? And I knew that was going to be a, a long night's sleep. Day two, we are back at the scene of the crime. Gage and I watched the footage over and over and I like it. I mean, it could have been three, four or five inches lower for sure, but we gave him plenty of time and we're gonna pick back up where we left off, which is only about five or 10 yards into the woods. And I, I, I don't know, my hope is he's piled up 50 yards in there, but we've been on these rodeos before where it's ended up uh, getting the headlamps out. So, without seeing them go down, no clue, but I'm glad we backed out. Right through here. As you could tell, when I shot, the snow was coming down, so after he bled, it, a lot of it got covered up, and this makes it a little bit more of a Sporty investigation. Oh yeah, both sides. <laughs> oh, we got good news, boys. Come on. Come on. I got eyes on him. 
And it's, it's incredible, you know, I, I've got to kill some pretty good deer and some of them have stories like this where there's been a, a couple year pursuit. Um, I don't know that we've targeted any deer as, as strongly as we targeted Richard for this whole season. Oh, oh. gosh. Another one of the legends. Hey, congrats. Yeah, it's pretty good. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks awesome. for coming out. Oh, of course. You too. Yeah. It's why we love hunting out here in the Midwest. It's why we love bow hunting these deer in the Midwest. Um, because a lot of things have to go right to, uh, to execute and make it happen. And this was one of those situations. That's one of the beautiful things about this group is there really is no selfishness. When the deer reaches that age in that harsh of an environment, like you want somebody to get a chance to, to put their tag on him, to put their hands on him. And I think it just worked out great that you have this guy that's crazy generous with this amazing property that he has and gives everybody else an opportunity to get in there and hunt this deer. Would have loved to have been on, on the other end of it, but glad Rochi closed out the deal. Okay, do you want to give a very heartfelt testimonial to Rochi for killing this deer? No. Okay. You know what I brought? In, in hopes of this. <laughs> I brought a little, a little kid cigar for my son. Julia, you're pregnant, so you're out. I know you, I know you love smoking these. <laughs> and this here, ironically, is a Luke Bryan special from Sure Thing Cigars. Luke, stole this out of your barn when I was staying up there. As a matter of fact, I think I stole a box of them from you. Nothing like a father-son cigar over a monster buck to finally hold him and uh, and see how big he, he really is and, and then to look back on, you know, missed opportunities or, you know, years past watching him, you know, come up on the ranch is, is something that uh, you just really can't get anywhere else.